Hello and welcome to day 45 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the study I've done today is by George Ness. It is called Midsummer. Um, with the last uh, George Ness study that we did, I was reading some biographical information from a book by Nikolai Chiskowski called George Ness. Um, and this is an awesome book to pick up if you'd like to learn more about George Ness. I'm not sure if it's actually in print now, but it's certainly not that hard to find on Amazon. Um, I was talking earlier, uh, last uh, the last video that we did of George's, uh, um, about some of his early um, uh, teachers. But uh, we're going to jump ahead to his uh, influence by the Barbizon School. And I read from chapter 3. Ines's second trip abroad was the most critical, the most decisively important experience in his artistic life. Ironically, therefore, virtually nothing is known about it except that it was spent in Paris, not in Italy. It was probably in 1853. We do not know exactly what Ines did in France, neither what he saw, whom he knew, nor what he painted, but whatever it was, it so profoundly impressed him that all paintings he made after this trip to the very end of his life would in some way show its influence. We do not know why Ines went to France instead of returning to Italy to complete the visit that ended prematurely. It is possible that Italy was still close to Ines. It is also possible that although Italy would never lose its attractiveness, he spent more, far more time and painted many more pictures in Italy during his lifetime than he did in France. It had, for the time being, lost its artistic prevalence. In the spring of 1854, Ines visited the Rijksmuseum Museum in Amsterdam. He apparently made only one visit, so this did not represent a campaign of intensive study of Dutch art, nor can it have been Ines's introduction to it. No serious landscape painter as Ines had been single-mindedly from the beginning, hardly any other subject by him is known, could neglect Dutch landscapes. And years later, when shown one of his early paintings, he acknowledged the influence of one of the Dutch landscape artists. I remember that picture, he said, I was thinking much of that artist when I painted it. But his visit to the museum may be in the token of a shift of attention away from the Italianate landscape of Claude Lorraine and Pocine, which had therefore been his chief model when which he went to Italy to study in both its natural and artistic originals. Vanessa's visit to Italy did not change his artistic direction. His visit to France changed it profoundly. And uh, we'll leave it there for now. I can see we're getting close to the end of the video. Uh, thanks for joining me for day 45, and uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow for day 46. If you'd like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take good care and stay out of trouble.